Well, it was supposed to be a referendum on the president. Instead, Democrats are reeling from another election loss. This time, it's in Georgia. Once again, the American people making their priorities clear that they care about safety and jobs. Somebody who knows about both is Mike Rowe. He is the host of The Way I Heard It, one of the world's most popular podcasts. He joins us right now from Louisville, Kentucky. Michael, good morning. Good to morning. You. Steve, Ainsley, hi, everybody. It's good to have you. Hey, Mike, I know you were probably watching the run up to the Georgia 6 election where the mainstream media is talking essentially this is the most important election in the world because it's going to show that America doesn't like what Donald Trump is doing. Well, as it turns right. out, the Republican won. That narrative is gone. What did the people say by picking Karen Handel 53 to 47 over John Ossoff, the Democrat? A little bit beyond my pay grade, but if I were to guess, <laughs> in my little slice of the world, the way I look at all this is yeah. the country is divided, obviously, in a lot of different ways. But the big way, from my perspective, is the group of people who are convinced that opportunity is alive and well, and the group of people who are convinced that opportunity is dead. And I think that, at base, that's the conversation we're having. Certainly through my foundation and what I look at, I see again and again, over and over, this notion that opportunity is dead, being challenged. And to the extent that that impacted Georgia, I can't really say, but it's what I see day mm -hmm. after day after day. People are, people are voting for the idea that it's not quite dead yet. It's more of an optimistic notion, mm -hmm. and it's uh, certainly something that I relate with. I'm sure. curious to hear your opinion about Hollywood weighing in on this. They gave so much <laughs> money for this guy to win in the state of Georgia. You represent so many people in the Midwest, where Steve might be from, or in Middle oh, America, yeah. the Heartland, and where I'm from in South Carolina. But I'm curious to find out what's your opinion. Do they, how do they know in Hollywood what's best for the state of Georgia? I don't know, but I'll tell you this, Ainsley. Honestly, I grew up outside of D.C. My office is in Santa Monica, California, mm -hmm. and I live in San Francisco. Right. I work in I the I would middle. not have expected that. <laughs> right. You know, but, but look, I, I, think, I think fundamentally this idea of them and us is specious. I think I don't know why the people in Hollywood would work so hard to affect that. I mean, I know why, but I'm not sure it's useful for the average American to look at Hollywood as this specific place that's sure. always thinking in this specific way. I honestly don't know, which is why, again, when it comes down to the macroeconomic conversations or the geopolitical talking points, I'm not your guy. But if it's a, if it's a micro conversation, sure. mild pun intended, <laughs> one individual at a time, I still think there's an opportunity through work, attitude, and a skilled trade to move the needle. Exactly. And that's the same thing that uh, the president and his team have been pushing with the apprentice program from last week and things like that. You have been yep. there from the get go and you've been talking to the administration. Does it seem like they're taking some of your ideas and they're going, hey, that could actually work? <laughs> well, to be clear, I don't think there's any such thing as an original idea in this space. It's part Horatio Alger. It's part work ethic. But this business around the skills gap is really interesting. And to be clear, I'm, I'm not in direct talks with the White House, but we have, we have exchanged ideas. And to me, the single biggest thing to focus on right now is not the creation of jobs and not the business of bringing jobs back, both of which are obviously important. It's the fact that six million jobs currently exist. They're, they're here right, right now. 75% of them do not require a college, a four-year college degree. Just so skill. we have to have a conversation about training. Yes, yeah. for God's sake, it's got to be skill, and it's got to be opportunity, and it's got to be ambition. Those things are still for sale. Yeah. All right, Mike, I know you're partnering with the Charles Koch Foundation. What are you doing? Well, for years, we've been working together on a variety of things. Right now in Louisville, once again, the greatest kept secret in the history of skilled labor is unfolding in this city. It's the National uh, Convention and Competition for Skills USA. 400,000 kids are in this organization. Most people don't know about them. And every year, my foundation uh, and Charles try and bring more and more kids here who have won their regional competitions. I'm talking about competitions in things like welding and steam fitting and carpentry and pipe fitting and all these different skills, right? So these kids are competing here. It's a very big deal. And uh, once a year, we try and come together and shine a light on this because honestly, 
when Votech left high schools, yeah. somebody mm -hmm. had to pick up the slack. And it wasn't the feds. It was no. private business and these kids. And it's a, it's a fabulous story, and I'm, I'm thrilled you guys are talking about it. If people watching right now would like to get their uh, children or people they know involved in next year's Skill USA, mm. how do they find uh, yeah. more information about it? Simplest thing to do is to go online and get a sense of how skills operates in your particular demographic or mm -hmm. zip code. It's not a it's not a uniform thing across the country, but there are 400,000 kids in it right now, so it's huge. Wow. That's great. But to, but to my point, you put 100 people in a room and say, "Who's heard of the Boy Scouts?" Everybody's hand goes up. Right. You say, "Who's heard of Skills USA?" Five hands go up. Mm -hmm. if, we, if yeah. we if we focus on this organization, I'm telling you, it's our best hope of closing the skills gap short term. Great so idea. true. I was a Girl Scout. I never, no one ever approached me and said, "Do you want to become a welder?" I'd have loved to have learned that skill. I was a Boy Scout, and I learned how to weld how you, in the future farmers you, of America. Really? <laughs> See, that's exactly. great. All right. Well, now there's a welding merit badge. That's so cool. Awesome. Times have changed. <laughs> All right, uh, Mike Rowe. Thank you very much for joining us today from Louisville, Kentucky. Anytime, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.